Hello everybody, this is James Diamond with GlockCNC.com and we are very excited to show you our new product and that is a BT30 headstock for Sureline, Tag, or even your custom mill application. Some of the beautiful parts about this thing are that you can either use a simple drawbar with it or you can use a full ATC or automatic tool changing system which involves a pedal clamp system. Now, here is some of the questions I know you guys are going to have right away. Some of you guys are going to wonder, okay, the BT30, I'll show you what that looks like. This is the tooling. This is a commercial grade piece of tooling that you'll find in a lot of professional environments and factories. And some may wonder, well, okay, is that going to be too big for my Sureline or my TIG? Another question people are going to wonder that we'll talk about in this video is, okay, now there's already R8, you guys sell R8, and there's the Tormach tooling system. Is it really any better than that? And oddly enough, that is a question that we also wondered when we went ahead and started testing this, and I'll talk about the very specific reasons why. And finally, what we'll talk about is, we, because this is a pre-sale offer, this is a pre-sale offer, which means that we are selling some of these already, and it's going to be about a 90-day delivery time between all, you know, all the suppliers and parts and everything come into us. We're doing some pre-sales and offering some really good rewards or bonuses for free upgrades to those who take advantage of it right away because all of it is going to be limited. All right, so let's get into it. Let's first talk about that question is, is this thing going to be too big for my mill? Here's the quick answer. If you can see behind me over here, that is our current model of headstock that we sell for the RA and the ER series. We sell those all over the world and people love them and the size is just right for those mills. Now, here is the new one right now. This is the new, this is about the size of it. This is not what it's going to look like. This is a 3D printed, just kind of rectangle to hold the bearings and everything, right? But this is about the approximate size and this is only slightly larger than what we already sell. And the reason we've been able to make this thing so compact is we're able to use pretty good sized bearings in there. And by using pretty good sized bearings, we're able to sink the actual tool holder way up into the headstock. That way you can make sure that you have as much of your Z axis intact as possible. And you've got a good robust headstock. So to answer that question, it's actually a really good size for small mills. Now let's talk about the question that a lot of people are probably going to wonder is, well, is this really having any advantage over using an R8 system or an R8 system as the Toolmark, Tormach tooling system? We had kind of the same question, and I'll tell you why we even kind of wanted to go down this route, and it's this. The reality of it is, that here is a spindle bearing. Anything that goes between the spindle bearing and the cutter itself is going to add a certain amount of error or run out. So now you'll have an actual spindle arbor that goes in here. That's going to have some run out to it or error, although it's going to be very minimal. But what happens when you use a Toromach tooling system is this. This collet is going to have a certain amount of run out or error. The tooling system that goes in this is also going to introduce a certain amount of run out or error. And now we have a problem what's called error stacking. So now we have run out or error on top of error on top of error. And by the time it actually gets down to the cutter itself, we ended up having, and a lot of our customers also ended up having more inaccuracy than what they really wanted to have. Now you might also think to yourself, well, how about if I just use the collet itself directly holding the end mill. Yes, you are definitely going to get better accuracy out of that. But the challenge is, even some of the really, really good collets for R8 are about five ten thousandths to eight ten thousandths, anywhere in between there, run out. On average for a good one, about five, six, ten thousandths. And how does that compare though to the BT30? Let's take a look. I'll set these down over here so they don't fall off. And we'll talk about the BT30 tooling. One of the beautiful parts about the BT30 tooling 
is just like this one. This is accurate. This is a runout of one ten thousandths of an inch runout. In fact, it's really common to find inexpensive tooling that's BT30 that is one or two ten thousandths of an inch runout. That is a factor of between three and four times better than even the collet itself for the R8 system. So now we're really talking about a precision machine. So now imagine that your mill is working with things that are commercial grade, one or two ten thousandths run out when it comes to the tooling. That is something that is genuinely special in the small mill world. Now, the other thing that we had to consider is that we really like the idea of the dual contact system with the Tormach. Now, we already know the Tormach has some problems with error stacking, but what about that extra rigidity you get from having a dual contact system? If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain it. If you can imagine this collet, it fits up into the mill's spindle, right? And what it does is it pulls onto this piece and it kind of sucks this up into the spindle and then this part, this flange right here, it rests on the spindle's face. And that gives it wider leverage and now you've got more rigidity to your machine and we really like that. In fact, if you are stuck with only being able to use an RA or that's simply your preference, then I really like using this so long as you can tolerate the amount of runout that you're going to get. Now, we wondered, what about if we lose, if we're missing out on the dual contact system by going with the BT30, is it ultimately going to make a difference? Is it going to actually net put us backward than where we want to be? Here's what we found out. If you take a look, actually I'll grab this back again. If you take a look at the BT30, look how much taper there is right there. And look how much taper there is right there on the R8. Now, width-wise, these are actually approximately the same. This is only slightly larger, but the taper is so much longer. And unfortunately, in a lot of R8 situations, this taper hangs outside of the actual bearings themselves, and that is not where you want to have the load hanging outside of the bearings because that makes it like a lever pushing against the bearings. Now, Let's take a look at the headstock that you can now get with the BT. All right. Here is our mock-up headstock right here. And this is actually a very accurate uh, 3D print of the spindle itself. So this seats up in here. Now, if you take a look at where those bearings are, and you take a look at where this taper is right there, those bearings almost completely encapsulate the entire taper length and that is exactly where you want your tooling to rest is on the inside of these bearings and by using a double stack of bearings and it capturing this almost entire thing right here it has multiple benefits number one it more than accommodated rigidity wise in fact it was better rigidity wise than what we got for benefits of the dual contact through the Tormach system and because we have these dual bearings, this long taper fits all the way up into these bearings, it does an excellent job of transferring energy from the cutter into the tooling, into the bearings, into the headstock, then into the z-axis carriage column, and so on. So what we ended up getting was much better energy management, and the reality of it is, milling, by and large, is about energy management. That's what gives you some really good finishes. Here's something else that ended up being really unique about this. So again, in a nutshell, to answer the question, yes, this turned out to be a significant improvement to the Tormach tooling system by virtue of both the accuracy, which is radically higher, and the dampening qualities when it came to the energy. And here's another cool thing about this. Remember at the beginning we talked about, okay, you can use a drawbar on this thing, or you can use a pedal clamp system with a pneumatic cylinder if you want. I would tell you this, if you're going to create an automatic tool changing system, obviously you definitely have to go with a pedal clamp system and a pneumatic system. But if you don't, you don't plan on making an automated tool changing system, I highly recommend that you go with the drawbar. Here's why. If you take a look, there's a drawbar in here, and all of these are threaded on the inside. All you have to do for really, really rapid tool change is you'll just place it inside, 
get yourself a handy dandy impact driver with a 3 8 inch socket adapter and the appropriate socket for the top of that drawbar and you just zip that thing in there screw it in and it'll just pull the tooling right up in there just perfectly when you're done and you want to swap out the tooling just hit reverse on your impact driver unzip it and it pops right out you have a tool change within just seconds so no more fiddling around if you have an er system only it's a little bit more work for sure getting that off no more touching this off if you already have the height already measured and it's fast it is just so fast to do that and so easy so you'll now have that with your new spindle so once again this is james diamond with glock cnc and i shall talk to you later